Hey guys, thank you so much and welcome to Dragon Ball Gaming, doing the Dyson Spear program, and uh, we're in the post game. Um, and by that I mean, so uh, I was looking at the technology tree, just to, to let you guys know. So I started working on Mission Complete. All right, the very last technology that's available at this point. Uh, accelerants are coming soon, so this is at a point where not in the game yet so everything has been researched except for mission complete and mission complete requires the universal matrix or the white cubes uh, and we've gotten those going and I realized that I think I was already in the post game this is a very interesting game that <laughs> it lets you kind of do the post game before you finish the game uh, if it was me I'd probably force people to do mission complete before I'd let them do uh, these things here the uh, the the little infinity symbol right where uh, on these upgrades so you get all these upgrades and then I got to the end and they're like oh you require the uh, the white you know universal matrix cubes um, and then I got one and, <laughs> and realized it didn't go away it just lets you upgrade again so you have level you know this one one two three four five and then i've been doing this one enough times where it's actually on level eight now so i like how it has the roman numerals here four and then five and then just infinity right <laughs> i didn't really look at that before um but it's just something that i'm like I, i'd like to see a quality of life thing where they change this and make kind of like this extra tier out here of just the actual infinity stuff because it all kind of looks you know, like, oh, I just need to keep upgrading, but... Yeah, these are all in, in the infinity category? So, I've been kind of working on these. My favorite is, like, the ray transmission. Like, oh, we're just going to keep getting more and more efficient. Um, and I think it's it's not additive. It's 15% of whatever the previous kind of stuff is. So, I've gotten this... I'm up to level 12 on ray transmission efficiency. I'm trying to get... You know, because I want the Dyson Sphere to be good, right? Even at level 12, it's only 16, it's still 16% degradation for the solar. Uh, so I'm like, well, it, lots of diminishing returns, I think, on some of these things. Uh, as opposed to something like the carrier engines that just seem cool because it's just 50% uh, faster. And vein utilization. I like that one. This mining speed faster and less less uh, ore consumption so that the materials out in the universe are actually more are just yeah, right they're just simply more right <laughs> so instead of like a million worth of whatever iron it's a uh, it's a million six right it's a million whatever so i'm like all right i'm gonna keep getting that so i decided you know what let's just go ahead and do um i don't know that i don't know that this will be you guys tell me what you think but i don't know if this will be the final video of the uh the dyson sphere let's plays but i at least wanted to finish quote unquote the game as it stands which is the uh which i'm going to consider as getting four thousand of these universal matrix cubes uh to say that i'm mission complete let's ignore the fact that i've already done tens of thousands for research speed and vein utilization and carrier logistics and raid fish anyway so if the whole game is just to make 4,000 white matrix cubes and then you're done I'm, I'm long past that and I've noticed that people have you know made these crazy setups to make even more of the white you know universal matrix cubes and I never really understood why until I just suddenly realized that like, oh, those upgrades are, those are infinite. Like when they say infinite, I think it just means that the, the level, I don't know if there is a level cap or how far it would be <laughs> and how many more of the cubes you would need every time. Uh, so that's something that we'll have to check out in the future. But to kind of let you guys know where I am, so I've done a whole bunch of these upgrades and actually, I want to show you guys the um, the setup that I've done for the research now. All right, so this is so we are on our home planet right now. I think we are. <laughs> All right, I've been building so much stuff. There it is, the Triforce Dyson Cube. It's not a cube, sphere, whatever. But it's all triangles anyway. <laughs> so check it out. Here's the new 
upgraded research complex. So this will look very different from the last time you guys saw it. Uh, you'll notice this big thing in the middle here. So all of... So I added another purple tower. I added two more green towers over here. But the uh, all of the cubes were going to a central tower for research, right? And at the time, I realized, you know, like, oh, I only need, like, one tower for research. That's all I really need. Uh, and then and then when I got to the Universal Matrix cubes, uh, that kind of changed. <laughs> so I, had, I switched it so that everything went to the central tower and started making the, the white cubes and realized that it wasn't making them fast enough and oh my gosh I need more and so I replaced that research matrix tower with as you can see I, uh, you know an interstellar logistics station and the whole purpose of this thing is just to take the cubes and with drones and uh, ship them over to another area and I have this one was originally always here for the green cubes and the green uh, as if you guys have played up to this point, uh, green can be used to make a lot of space warpers. So this is like the more efficient way to make space warpers. So I have some of those. So I already set that one up so that these are being supplied to my other planet to create space warpers. And so I'm like, okay, so, and therefore I need more. So I have like four green to. Why is this one up? No. Uh oh. You're out of stuff. Oh, why are you out of stuff? Oh, it's just not powered. <laughs> Love it when small things. All right, there we go. Now we're working. All right, small fix. That's working. Okay. So all the cubes, including the green here, green's being transported off world, but they're also being supplied locally over here so I send you know with follow these cubes so these guys these little drones coming over here to this guy and this is my new research park so I see I have all the cubes coming in here all the colors and they're all just coming in from the planet supply remote doesn't matter nowhere else is using these and for the universal matrix cubes, remember you need antimatter. So I think it's, yeah, this one is pulling the antimatter uh, from another of my planets. So I got a full 10,000 full of antimatter, and then all go in here. So I have three towers making the white cubes, which, again, the white cubes require one of each of the other colors plus antimatter. So, because they take so long to make, I just went ahead and yeah, made three towers of these things so that they can all... <laughs> so, go faster. Uh, this last tower at the end is for research, and it is pulling all the other cubes, so not antimatter, but just all five of the other cubes, uh, because there were a couple of researches still left that still required the regular cubes. So that's what that tower was for. Uh, it's not going to get any more use now. Uh, I do have two, I guess it's kind of one and a half towers for regular research using the white cubes. So the only thing that goes here, as you can see, the white gets deposited on these little variables that go across into this area. And this is a little holding thing for the white ones if we get too many, which we've not done. <laughs> all, they all get used up. Not even close to using up all these. Uh, but yeah, so so at least with the current setup with three full towers making white, uh, we're using them all real fast. So, okay. So this is the new setup. So this is what I would recommend. So you need basically you know, two interstellar logistics stations so between because you need six things you need all five of the killer cubes and antimatter to make the white uh, and like I said it's the, the other ones over here antimatter that flows on this conveyor belt all the way over here down that's the one this one's the antimatter there we go so that's all the antimatter and that makes our white cubes so yeah so that's what I've been doing to do all those crazy upgrades 
for a while and then I just figured you know what we should just quote unquote beat the game because that's apparently all that it requires so uh so the technology tree is, is rocking and rolling and we're going to be mission complete here in like you know 10-15 minutes uh but just to kind of share with you guys what I've been doing so that's the research part of this uh, so the other problem of course is that if you want to make all these cubes and uh, we're not backed up on like purple especially so I've had to I've had to make a lot more yeah especially for green so I've had to make more broadband particles for purple I've had to make uh, a lot more quantum chips for green I just so you know what? I'll show you guys what's going on over there so again, my uh, my primary planet is kind of light manufacturing and heavy on research. But the thing I, you know, if you remember, I, I do most of my manufacturing on Ethel Borealis 3. So we're going to head over there. Okay. So I've gotten to the point, so I do want to try out some other Dyson Sphere things, but uh, just just to show, yeah, I have a whole bunch of the launchers that are just not being used because I've done as much as I want to do on the Dyson Sphere right now. I just wanted to make, you know, all this, the, the Triforce of Triforces, right? So all these Triforces upon Triforces. So, like, I think it looks cool, and, uh, and you know, that's that's all I really want out of this one. I also have this kind of roleplay sort of thing where I'm like, you know what, if I can't block the sun on my home system because you know, I, I imagine real physics would would say that if you blocked out the sun to the entire solar system and collected it all in the Dyson sphere, then the rest of the planets would just you know grow cold and die. So I'm like, well, let's not do that. So that doesn't sound fun for our home system. Uh, but I've built up a whole bunch of these carrier rockets that are ready to go when we get to a new system And that's what we'll probably do next time after After quote-unquote post game Would be to like okay now let's make another Dyson sphere. Let's see what happens So okay So here we go. This is what I want to show so this this line right here This goes really far and what is that? These are those, uh, yeah, plain filters. And there's a bunch of these. So as you can see, uh, yeah, from the last time you probably saw, you know, I've more than doubled the amount of quantum chips being produced. And those take a long time to make. Uh, so the processors haven't been too much of a problem. Just added a little bit more there, but the Plain filters again take 12 seconds to make, so you need a lot of those, and that's what this entire line is, right? So from from that tower there, that's pulling in the goods, all the way out here. Yeah, these are all making plain filters, and so this has been insane. So like I had to like rework some of these little areas just in between just so I can get this long enough and everything else is just kind of supporting it here this yeah the crystals all this I don't have the organic or optical gray crystals coming in anymore I mind out what little I had in that one system so so it's all the normal ones yeah I'm using the what is this crystal yeah titanium crystal and graphene so this has been working pretty well. All to make these quantum chips. And all the quantum chips. So I finally have a good supply of quantum chips again. And the quantum chips are good for making the, the green uh, research cubes. So finally have that going. In, you know, in like a good steady state. So that took a little while to, to build up. The other thing I wanted to do, since you guys probably last seen, uh, since it took a little while to make all these, 
I wanted to kind of show you, uh, so not even in the system actually, where are we going? Actually, they added another feature since I was last playing, where if you go out to the galaxy map, there we go, I want to go to Pollux, and then you can say set waypoint. And then it's like, oh, it's over here. And then you can hit tab, bring this menu up, click it on, hit tab again, bang. So yeah, I did, yeah, the waypoint thing is nice, so I can actually find where I'm going. So all right, so we're heading toward Pollux, which this is one of our uh, manufacturing centers. Uh, Pollux one is, if you remember, this is where I have my giant coal smelting, not coal smelting, the copper smelting. Uh, facilities. And then Pollux 2, I've wanted to be kind of my power center. All right, I have no Dyson Sphere in this system, but I was very keen on the system because it had 74 crude oil per second. So that's like triple like what my home planet is. I'm like, oh my gosh. So because oil to me basically meant free power. Oh, and our energy exchange. Wow. Here we go. So I uh, I made this my power planet. So by the time I got back here, they're all done. Um, as you see, there's a bunch of these energy exchangers that their entire job is just to charge batteries. And where do we get all this power? Like, all of the power in this uh, system is all from the oil. And I was even kind of playing around with taking some of the oil and converting it into, you know, hydrogen and refined oil, too. Uh, I want to point out, so I have most of the oil coming into this planetary logistics station here. Uh, and it is using But I guess because now we don't have the energy exchangers going, it doesn't have to run at full power anymore, so all these stations are... Yeah, that's way slower. Yeah, 12%. Wow. Yeah, I used to be more than 100%. Like, I was using 100% on charging uh, batteries, which I guess I don't need anymore. So, dang. I wanted to be able to show you guys that. So... Oh, man. I will top off my power here. I sell power stations. All right. So one thing I figured out is that if they're running at full tilt, uh, oil. So I'll have to do an, a, an actual test, like show you, show you guys, in maybe another video or something. Uh, but if oil is running at 100%, it uses this oil in like in less than a second and a half. One and a half seconds, it's used up. It's a little bit less than that. And what I found, and I started testing this, is that if you come all the way out here, we built a bunch of thermal plants. Um, so each one uses roughly 44, like an entire Mark III belt full of oil can support 44 uh, power thermal power stations and so I went ahead and broke it off here so I can have another belt and bring even more and I, I figured I might start doing this I use the uh, just the foundations and you know, use the plus minus to make it one square so I actually wrote out on the ground <laughs> you know how many it was so that's a nice little little tool for you all right so I wrote out 40 for this this line because it's you know, two every line so it's 20 long so 40 total so 44 including these and that will use up all of your oil on a single mark 3 belt at 30 oil a second so 30 oil a second one mark 3 belt can support 44 thermal power stations running at 100% Oh, here we go. And so it's charging some batteries now. 
So we ship some off, so they're ready to... So yeah, so like less than a second and a half, it uses up an oil. And so... So 44 right here are using 30 oil a second. But like I said, that's one belt. So when you come over here... So I mark that as 40. That 40 starts from here. So you can't really tell very well, but uh, but anyway, I can zoom in here. Yeah, so there's another belt of oil running on top of this one. And this one jumps down and starts feeding from here. So 44 starts from here over. And then over here over is another 44. And as you can see, I've gotten to the point where I can use these artificial stars, um, which are super fun. Put in these uh, antimatter rods uh, to fuel, right? But uh, I wanted to try to get kind of like infinite power that I didn't have to use, um, you know, the the stuff for antimatter because that that requires other goods. So I wanted something more simple, just like you know, oil, pull it out of the ground, feeds into fuel, done. Uh, and so things I've figured out is that a single belt of Mark III belts of oil can support 44 thermal power stations, which is fun. And then uh, for this one, so this is running, this entire belt is running off uh, refined oil, which I think is roughly the same, right? Because refined oil is only about 10% more effective than regular oil. So not a lot of difference, but when you do the uh, plasma refining, which these guys are doing, you get refined oil and hydrogen. So I have the hydrogen coming this way along with a dedicated source of hydrogen, right? Because gas giants make lots of hydrogen. So uh, This entire row of thermal stations is running on solely hydrogen. 20, 40, 60, 80, I have 85, I think, when I did the math, I think somewhere between 85 and 88 uh, thermal stations that can run off a single Mark III belt of hydrogen, so 30 hydrogen a second can run about 85 to 88 uh, thermal power stations. So super exciting that I got all that online and so yeah um, I highly recommend automating building uh, all the buildings <laughs> at some point just because I did not build all these manually I, I had a, a place that moved so like I grabbed like 200 power stations when I came to this planet to uh, start building all these things and uh, and as you can see I've used them up so <laughs> This line right here alone is 85 power stations. All generating at two. And uh, yeah, so so artificial sun is very nice because it's, you know, what it was, 75 fuel. And of course I didn't tell you. It yeah, there we go. Power, 75 megawatts of power if you put an antimatter fuel rod in it. But like I said, I wanted something cheaper and just, you know, easy to pull out of the ground. So that's what the power stations are for. And if you want to be even more efficient about it, so I'm not even using all of the oil, right? Because like I said, this oil is insane on this planet. Uh, that it's generating 74 oil a second. So 74 oil a second is a stupid amount of power generators which as you can see I'm not even using all of it yet but if you want to go even further you can always be crazy like this and turn the oil into <gasps> congratulations builder of great civilizations the primary mission of the Dyson Sphere program has been successfully completed with your efforts. The energy you provided is bound to make the homeland develop with high speed, and your figure will imprint with every step forward. This cluster has been activated. To remember your achievements, people light up a star in the Milky Way star map. 
Yes, it will always record your contribution to the forthcoming third level civilization. Now please rest a while, and then embark on the journey of the Sea of Stars again. We did it! We completed the Dyson Sphere program. Mission complete. Congratulations, the builder of great civilizations. You have completed the Dyson Sphere program. I like the uh, I like the parentheses. Oh, but you can continue the game. Like, well, yeah, I'm not done. I gotta get even more vein utilization, even more free resources. I think vein vein utilization is probably the single most powerful tech upgrade. Right, of all the upgrades you can get, vein utilization just means that there are more resources in the universe. Because right now, like if you were to play this game for thousands of hours, like the same single game, you would run out of resources. There are some resources that are infinite, like energy from stars, you know, with the Dyson Spheres. And there are some that are... Uh, infinite from like oil or water or sulfuric acid oceans yeah there's certain things that are infinite but of the things that are finite like iron and copper and silicon and stone and whatever this just means that there's more materials out in the universe so vangulization I have a special place for because that that ranks up up on the ones of yeah this is this is more more stuff than you would expect the rest of them are just like efficiency things like oh my drones go faster oh I have more drones oh I have you know more energy which I don't really care about the energy the this one's pretty good the the ray transmission so that the Dyson sphere energy is more efficient that's just good Faster drones and vessels when you start getting this huge empire, like, I get it. But the rest of them are just kind of like, eh. I don't know. So, vein utilization. So, let's keep it going. Okay. But we did it, so I hope that was helpful. So, we, uh, so we saw that we can do 44 uh, crude oil thermal power stations on a Mark III belt. We can do like 80 to 88 on the hydrogen. And all of that, so like this particular planet, all it is is running these energy exchangers so that we can build these batteries that will power other star systems, right? So I have you know, plenty of other star systems if, uh, if you guys haven't tried. So you charge them on one planet, and then you transport them as full accumulators, and they hold you know, 90 megajoules of power, and you use the discharge function on the new planet, and they just, they work as amazing, you know, power generation. So you don't have to worry as much about bringing in you know, solar panels that aren't gonna run a whole lot of wind, and they're not as expensive per se on uh, on like the deuterium or uh, yeah deuterium, the fuel rods or the antimatter fuel rods which that'll jump start your plane on these artificial stars but yeah the energy exchangers are how you move literal power around your universe so very cool so guys I think that'll do it so we did it mission complete we have made it ice and sphere and we have mission complete the program of the Dyson Sphere program. So guys, I think that'll do it for this one. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.